Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and boy have I got a treat for you here today. We're going to be checking out NDS playing in the tier 8 German tank destroyer, the Ferdinand. I recently did a video on this tank towards the end of last year, I think it was one of the last videos of 2015, talking about the fact that this tank had a buff in patch 913. So I'm not going to go over that in too much detail. Basically, rate of fire increase by 2.5% and also a rather large increase of its hit points to 1,500, which means that this tank is more durable than ever. If you want to know more details about that, definitely go and check out that video. So, NDS has decided that he wants to camp in the base. Gosh, I'm not sure if this is the right play for a player of his caliber. I think that he might be able to perhaps assist the other players on his team a little bit more. Positions that I would personally like to take the Ferdinand into on this map Possibly you could come up here with this 59 pattern and try and work around this corner. That is a bit risky though because you can get overwhelmed and they can try and flank around you. Alternatively, if you make your way towards the center of the map, there are some very nice positions here that you can use from the bush. The only problem with this location is that if your enemies try and get behind you here, then they can actually shoot you in the back and you don't really want to get shot in the back by the Ferdinand at all. Alternatively, of course, there are positions down here where you can hide probably quite a bit of your lower plate and just use the superstructure on this tank to be able to engage your opponents down here. Or alternatively, and finally, you could try and hold this flank that the Lerva is in. Or, I guess what NDS has decided to do is kind of hold all three of those flanks at the same time. The only problem is, is that he's not going to help his allies before they die if they're in aggressive locations. From here, you can secure shots up this way at enemies that make their way down this slope. But you've got to watch out because you've got to have a couple of people spotting and luckily he does. Also from here, you can get shots down this alleyway. That's exactly where NDS is looking right now. And also, if your opponents make your way up and try and push through here, you can also shoot along this corridor. And finally, if they push around the corner on the left, you can also engage them and try and help th out this Lerva. The only problem that I really have with taking this position at the start of the game is effectively what you're doing is saying that all of your allies here unless they fall back are pretty much going to die this corner down here doesn't really get one at all until your opponents push you they have to push past here for nds to be able to get shots across and that usually means that everyone on this corner has died that's the same case for along here if you have to wait for your enemies to push along this cor corridor Generally, your allies aren't going to be getting vision on them until they reach this corner, and by that time, it's too late. And it's the same situation up here. As soon as the allies start to win this flank, and also the northern flank, then generally you've let too many of your friends die to be able to, to still have a chance to win. Remember that if you just hang at the back, it's quite easy to, to pull off large amounts of damage. But generally, if you put yourself in those kind of one versus six situations at the end of the game, or even one versus ten situations, you're not really going to be increasing your win ratio. But I do understand why NDS has decided to choose this flank on Fjords, because frankly, for the reasons which I've just highlighted, it does have some amazing shots uh, across pretty much all of the map. You've just got to have to hope that your, your allies kind of work with you on that. And it looks like the 59 pattern is. None of his allies have died on the northeastern corner of this map, as we can see. And he puts in his first shot into the Indian Panzer on the enemy team. Now the Lerva has actually fallen back into a correct location. And that means that the, uh, the, the enemies that are towards the southwest corner around this mountain range here are going to push around. Interestingly, his team have actually outflanked them and managed to get around. You can see the VK there. Now NDS is taking shots at this IS-3. Let me just get my reticle in the center so we can see the outline. There's a bit of a bug with the replays, as you can see there. Nice shot into the IS-3. Can he pull off the second one? Oh, no. He was just giving a little bit too much lead, and the IS-3 stopped dead in his tracks. And unfortunately, NDS whiffs the shot. Can he put in the second? Come on. These are big hits. Yes, 516 damage. If you're wondering why this tank is hitting so hard at Tier 8, it's because it gets 120, what is it, 28 or is it 26? 28 millimeter. And that takes away 490 hit points on average per shot. And that means that you don't generally have to hit your opponents very much at all. As we can see, a rival of the Ferdinand, the Jagdpanther 2, the more mobile, 
vehicle, which used to have better rate of fire until the Ferdinand's rate of fire was buffed recently, taking him down. And that Jagdpanther 2 just simply doesn't have the hit points to compete with the Ferdinand. So I think you're beginning to see what I was talking about earlier on, and why, why sitting at the back, even though you can pull off damage, everyone just seems to wilt at the same time. And it's not like that he had a statistically that weak team. Fair enough, there were no green players versus one, two, three, four green players on the enemy team. But I feel like NDS could have perhaps aided them a little bit more. Nevertheless, he pulls off 3,000 damage, but he finds himself up until that point in a 3 versus 11 situation. There's a T28 prototype. One thing to highlight here is that NDS does not have a very skilled crew on this tank. He doesn't have six cents. And so don't be confused. He is actually spotted now as we begin to see a range of shots starting to hit his vehicle. I'm just going to try and quickly fix the camera. Oh, we can't see how much damage he's taking as it goes on. What a shame. But I'm going to spoil it a little bit for you and tell you that the T28 prototype on the enemy team is in fact using a 90 millimeter. He's not using the 105, and he's not even using the top gun, the, the 120 millimeter the T28 prototype could be using. So good job finishing off the T-150 there. But now, unfortunately, because NDS turn exposes his side armor to the T-28 prototype by the looks of it, he's getting nailed in the side. But still, the gun depression on the third which is not too bad, it's 8 degrees, is actually managing to do some really good work from the slope here. He secures his fifth kill of the game and 5,000 damage. That is a lot of damage to have done in a Tier 8 tank. Is he going to be able to handle the rest of this? Great shot there, shutting down the T-54 Mod 1 on the enemy team. That is not a player, nor a tank that you want to leave hanging around. Very resilient vehicles if they can get their frontal armor to you. But then again, this 240 plus millimeters of penetration the Ferdinand gets with its standard rounds is more than enough to be able to challenge that Tier 8 Soviet armor. However, NDS is firing off his APCR rounds, perhaps willy-nilly, or perhaps he thinks that at this point, every single bounce could prove disaster. And that's, that's right. When you find yourselves in these situations where you're so heavily outnumbered, every bounce could be a disaster. But frankly, I don't feel like he's needed these APCR rounds yet. All of the rounds that he's fired with them would have easily been able to penetrate the tank and take them down. But the enemies just don't seem to be respecting his position. They are underestimating a very dangerous player in a very dangerous top-tier tank destroyer. And luckily for NDS, the 59 pattern on his team is, is probably spotting for him a lot here. And he's enabling him to, to react to the situation and take them down one by one by one. And that's important because if that 59 pattern hadn't played, frankly, so well on that flank and be getting so much vision for NDS, I think the enemies would have just swarmed him. And fair enough, the Ferdinand's frontal armor is fantastic, but as soon as it starts getting shot in the side, as we can see here, its armor doesn't hold up all that well against um, kind of about 150 millimeters of penetration plus, because I believe the side armor is 80. Even if it's angled, you know, 45 degrees, that's not really going to stand up. So when DS pokes over the ridge, he's using binoculars, so his view range won't be very good unless he gets stationary. So he needs to probably sit still for a little while to be able to find the tanks, but he doesn't manage to spot the T-28. Instead, he fires one off into the IS-2. And unfortunately, that 59 pattern on his team finally wilts away, leaving him in a one versus five situation. Now he's going to be contesting the Kolobanov's medal. He's got 10 rounds of armor piercing, well, eight rounds of armor piercing and two rounds of APCR to be exact, and two high explosive rounds. Is he going to have enough ammunition to be able to handle five separate tanks? He doesn't want to go over that ridge. The KV-4 gets spotted. Wow, disastrous play there by the A43. I think he got a, a bit excited. Tried to flank the Ferdinand and gets shut down really hard. Now the frontal armor of the Ferdinand comes into effect as he bounces the 122 millimeter that the IS-2 is using. Now the KV-4 pushes around the corner, misses his shot, and the IS-2 tries again, bouncing off the superstructure this time. NDS doesn't quite have the reload to finish him off, but instead puts one into the KV-4. Can that KV-4 pen him? Please no, he's doing good work with angling even his lower plate downwards there. And that means that the KV-4 bounces off and 433 damage later, 1,346 in total to that tier eight Soviet heavy tank takes him out of the game. Doesn't quite manage to have the cupola of the IS-2. And now a tier eight German heavy tank, Alerva is trying to flank him here. He puts a good shot up into that German heavy tank. 
taking off his tracks and also doing 431 damage to him. Is he going to be able to keep him tracked while still evading shots from this IS-2? He retracks the Lerva and very rightly turns his armor to bounce a shot from the IS-2. Does so fantastic play. And it doesn't look like that Lerva has the best of repair crew as he manages to shut him down, securing his 10th kill of the game. What fantastic awareness by NDS here. He really is proving to be a hell of a player to take out at this end of this situation. Now reducing a 5 versus 1 to a 2 versus 1. Odds are certainly more in his favor now. He has 437 hit points left. That means he should be able to take a shot from the IS-2. And he's definitely going to be able to take a shot from the T28 prototype, as we found that he's using the 90mm with that 240 alpha damage. Nevertheless, it's really kind of one strike, and then he's out at the moment. He can't afford to take two shots from either of these tanks. He pokes up, I guess hoping to find out what that T28 prototype is doing. And this IS-2 seems to be waiting for the T28 prototype to get into position. This IS-2 seems to be the only sane one on the enemy team, having picked up three kills and definitely making NDS's situation at the end of this round very much more difficult. So what would be going through your mind right now? Well, he spots the T28 prototype. He's on 10 kills. Will he find a shot under the, underneath the dead Lerva? He's trying to find it. He knows that he might be able to shoot under that tank, but instead aims, blind fires at a full health T28 prototype. Will he be able to find if he hits him or not? We'll just have to find out. Now the IS-2 on 9% hit points, definitely a one shot, tries to poke up, keeps vision on NDS. Can NDS find out where that T28 prototype is? Yes, he can. Now onto 61% hit points. He puts a shot into the side of the cheeks. Luckily, it goes in. Great shot there. Great awareness to shoot the side of the turret, but he's got to watch out because he has no more APCR ammunition. He's going to fire one more AP, and it looks like he wants to load a high explosive shell next. He tries to fire into the side of the cheeks, but it doesn't even do any damage to the T-28 prototype. And the IS-2 is going to take the situation into his hands. He's now got two high explosive rounds left. The IS-2 penetrates a... Oh my goodness. Absolute disaster. What a painful heartbreak at the end of this round. As the IS-2 on the enemy team finally penetrates his tank using a heat round this time with vastly higher penetration than the standard rounds on that 122 millimeter and that means that unfortunately for nds he has to turn his side armor to the t28 prototype who finishes him off what an absolute heartbreak to a very exciting end game situation for nds here but well played to the t28 prototype for finally being able to to shut down this elephant on the enemy team hiding behind yeah one of nds's allies in the Skoda T40. There was pretty much nothing more that NDS could have done in this game to be able to take down the victory, at least with the position that he decided to, to hold at the beginning of the game. I still feel that perhaps if he tried to hold one of the flanks, then there wouldn't have been just this huge amount of death. He frankly sacrificed half of his team to be able to do 3,000 damage early on. And while of course that's certainly going to help out your WNA, I don't feel like it's going to be helping your win chance. Even your presence near your allies can aid them in doing damage because it can distract the enemy team and generally a more skilled player will use their armor, especially in a matchup like this where the Ferdinand is a top tier tank, to help their allies to bounce the shots from the enemy team to enable them to do damage. Nevertheless, this was still an absolutely incredible round. Let's just take a very quick look at the post-game stats. This was the highest damage I've seen in a tier 8 tank since that fantastic round by OxyClean in the Charioteer. This round scored NDS a second mark of excellence, a pulls medal for those 11 kills he picked up, unsurprisingly a high caliber medal for 9,413 damage. That's just absolutely preposterous considering this is a tier 8 tank and also a tank sniper medal for doing the highest amount of damage at a distance of 300 meters. Talking about damage, 9,413 is the most I have seen in a tier 8 vehicle since we saw OxyClean's monster charioteer round last year. This was 2,089 base experience points and he still made over 20,000 credits profit with all of those premium rounds fired, firing all but one shell in his tank, 29 rounds, hitting 27 and 25 of those penetrating. The Ferdinand's armor held up really well here, nearly 4,000 damage block. And it's just unfortunate that it was that 
final heat round from the IS-2 on the enemy team, combined with a side shot from the T-28 prototype that was the straw that broke the elephant's back here. Nevertheless, NDS, thank you so much for submitting this on the replays.quickybaby.com website. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and hopefully you guys did as well. If you did, please consider giving this video a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And if you want to see another monster round in the Ferdinand, then simply click through up here or use that more info icon in the top right hand corner of your screen to see why the War Ball 1 shows that this tank is elephantastic. And also let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about NDS's decision to stay in base for this game. Do you think that that position is fantastic for a tank destroyer and it's good to have at least one support vehicle there? Or do you feel that it kind of damned his team considering he was one of the, the top tier tank destroyers and a very well armored one at that? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.